Hello and welcome to day two of Let the Redeemed of the Lord Say So Fast. God is so good and I'm so glad to be with you. I'm Nick Kupalithis, lead pastor at the Victory House in Percival, Virginia. And let's jump into this. If you haven't seen yesterday's video, I know it was a little bit long, but take time and go through that. We talked about how God is sovereign. He is the God who blesses. He's a God of steadfast love, mercy, and compassion. And he's a God of redemption. He's a God who redeems. And he's purchased us back by his blood. And we get to serve and seek this wonderful God who is so good. Lord, we just even thank you right now. God, speak to us today. Father, in Jesus' name. So as you have your Bible and you take notes, don't take notes of just what I'm saying, but write down what God is speaking to you. All right, specifically here, let's look at verses 3 through 9. And I just want to touch on 3 again because this is really, the context of this is speaking about Israel. But now we can look at this and say this is how God brings the world in to his community, to his church, to his kingdom. And that verse 3 says he gathers them in from the east and the west and the north and the south. Meaning God, especially in this dispensation, God in this moment, in this season of time, calls people in from all over the place, no matter the color of their skin, no matter their ethnicity. He calls all people to himself. And now this psalm will begin to tell us about those that he has called. Let's read this together, verses 4 through 9. It says, Some wandered in desert wastes, finding no way to a city to dwell in. Hungry and thirsty, their soul fainted within them. So what do we see at first? So some of the people, he's not talking about the rich, he's calling the wealthy, the well-off. He's not talking about those that maybe society would accept. He's saying, he's saying the first people that, he be, that he's going to address are people who have no community. They have no home. These homeless individuals, they, they wandering in desert wastes. They, they have no city. They have no people, no tribe to gather around. They are by themselves. And not only are they by themselves, but they're not doing too well because the scripture says they're hungry and they're thirsty and their soul fainted within them. Not only were they physically hungry and thirsty, but they were spiritually, they were emotionally, they were mentally, they were, they were tired. You ever been to that place where you feel like you feel separate, you feel alone, and you feel tired? And this is what this psalm is talking about, that individuals who feel alone and tired and weak. And it says in verse 6, let's read that together. It says, then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. Again, remember the premise for this whole psalm is that the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever. He redeems those that are in trouble. I want you to think about that. A holy, meaning a pure and perfect God, a God who has no sickness, no dis-ease, nothing. He, he, he's, just, he's, he's pure. He's clean. He's holy. He's like no other. And yet he listens to those that are in distress. Verse 6, then they, those that were in distress, they cried to the Lord in their trouble. I want to tell you this, that God is not nervous about the trouble that you're in or the thing that you're praying for, is that God hears those that cry out to him. And that's the point of this, that you can be in deep trouble and deep distress. You can be in that place where you're weary and tired, but in your trouble, call to the Lord, because look what it says in verse 6. God delivered them from their distress. He led them by a straight way, and look what he did, so precious. And he led them to a city to dwell in. Let them thank the Lord for his steadfast love. And his wondrous works to the children of man. It wasn't just a blessing for these individuals, but it was a blessing for their children. It was generational. And then verse 9 says, For he satisfies the longing soul and the hungry soul he fills with good things. I think there's like three things, right? Number one is trouble. You might be in trouble. The second thing is that God intervenes. In your distress, in your trouble, God intervenes. 
And the way he intervened for these individuals is that he led them to a community of people. He, that means he led them to a place where they could be fed, where they could drink, where they could be restored. That's awesome. That's awesome. He says, this is the wondrous works, and it's not just for them, it's for their children. So the first thing you see, you see in this psalm is you see trouble, but you see then God's intervention. And then the last thing is you see blessing. And look what he says. He satisfies the longing soul. And the hungry soul he fills with good things. And so this is what I want you to do today. Are you longing for the Lord? Are you have a longing soul? Are you weary? Are you in distress? Are you hungry? I don't mean just for a burger and fries, which you might be because we're fasting, but are you hungry for the good things of the Lord? I want to tell you that the blessing of the Lord is this, is that he will satisfy you and that he will fill you with good things. You say, Pastor, you don't know what I've done. You don't know where I've been. You don't know what I've been going through. You're right. I don't know, but the Lord knows. And just like these individuals, they cry to the Lord in their trouble. And so I encourage you today, whether it's your list of prayers or whatever that looks like, cry to out to the Lord today and allow him to intervene in your life. And so God, I pray right now in the name of Jesus, thank you for this individual in this church that are watching and walking through this fast. I pray for intervention. That in the distress, Lord, you're not nervous, you're not distracted, but Lord, you're going to come and you're going to intervene today. You're going to hear the prayer and intervene and bring a blessing. And Lord, your word says that you will satisfy the longing soul and you will fill the hungry soul with good things. And so, Father, thank you this morning. Thank you in this moment for the good things the blessing. We turn to you in our distress. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Listen to the Lord today. Today's your day of breakthrough. It's your day of feeling the satisfaction and knowing the satisfaction of the Lord. God bless.